Sometimes the best finds on an antiquing trip are the ones you didn't expect. We were on a highway sale in Kentucky looking at junk on people's farms and the bridge was out and we ended up going by this place. This is Irish Acres. It is an amazing store. It has so many things that you just have not seen in decades. So come on, let's take a look. Well, this certainly is a far cry from a highway sale. We've had a lot of fun on the highway sales so far, but it is really refreshing to get into a place that has a lot of really wonderful antiques and vintage. This was originally a school and when it was redone, they just filled every nook and cranny with furnishings and antiques. And there's a lot of really wonderful things. We'll start with the little dresser here. This has sort of a silvered flat mirror and nice little knobs. 275 they have on this. This is a doll dresser from about 1890 with the East Lake style. This with these carved birds, most likely going to have been made sometime around 1880. Look at the base of this piece. It's $5,850, but it is meant for a big, spectacular mansion somewhere around here. We're getting close to Lexington, and Lexington is a very traditional town and a very wealthy town with a lot of old homes that this sort of thing would be appropriate. Up here, some beautiful porcelain from over 100 years ago. The tall blue vases are a matched pair of Nippon, priced around $500. The inner vases are old Paris porcelain from France around 1860 to 1880. There's also a very pretty Murano glass pair of perfume bottles and some Fenton cranberry glass and an old China doll with a big, big puppy skirt. RJ Horner was a great furniture maker out of New York in this very highly carved mahogany set with big shield mirrors and the beveling are a great example of their work around 1890. Look at the lion carving in the center. Layman's Antiques, which is the parent company, I guess you could say, and parent of Laura of Fatbird Finds, sold an R.J. Horner set similar to this for something in the $5,000 range. Look at the wonderful collection of heron with the fish scale, the fishnet. That is really fun. Those are great pieces. I'm sure they're not inexpensive, but they are not inexpensive anywhere where people know what they are. And it looks like the prices are in the $150 and $200 range. Again, not unexpected for the quality of what they have. On the other hand, the Halahaza fishnet, also from Hungary, $46. Halahaza is a good maker of porcelain, and I think it's interesting to watch them compete with Heron, but they are competing with them at a lower price point. 1850s and 60s Gothic Revival, American bedroom furniture, beautiful French chandeliers. This reminds me of the type of furniture that I used to see when I was first in the business 30 years ago. But so much of this went to fancy homes and in the West Coast was built into new housing by wealthy people. So you just don't see giant banquet tables like this often anymore. This says that it is fry glass, and fry glass was made up in upstate New York. This one will definitely glow under a black light. Winslow Anderson came out with the Blanco fish in the early 1950s. This is a clear one. They were very popular again in the 1980s, especially in clear, because that was the era where people were putting colored marbles and everything. This one is 16 inch, and it is priced at 195. This tea caddy is quite beautiful. Look at the hand painting. It is on paper mache, done at some point, probably around 1860. Here is a really elaborate piece of wicker. This is 19th century. This is similar to what Haywood Wakefield was making back then. We saw Haywood Wakefield modernist tables earlier in this, but now we're seeing what the wicker that they and other companies like them made in the mid to late 1800s. And this one is priced at 350 the pair of these very grand gilded mirrors has sold. So there is an entire world beyond picking along the roadside. And 
And these dealers are fulfilling this need in a really beautiful way. While I don't work around this sort of furniture every day, I do run across it in appraisals, so I have some idea of current market values, and I have to say their prices are reasonable for the caliber and quality of the items that they have for sale here. This was an important part of being ladylike in the 1870s. You had to have your cuspidor held under your arm, under your shawl, so that you could spit into it because women chewed tobacco as much as men back then. The Victorian era was not as genteel as you think it was. Nice hanging Victorian parlor lamp. It is nice to see where all the true antiques have gone other than into collections because we just don't really see a lot of beds like this anymore. We don't see a lot of shiffer robes and dressers with huge floor length mirrors on one side and it's a form that's kind of been lost to a lot of modern decorators, but there are some real charms in this, and there's also a lot of durability. I mean, if this stuff's lasted 150 years, it can probably outlast our lifetime. Wayland Gregory is definitely a name to know in art pottery. This one's dated about 1940. You can see how modern it was for its time. And there is your signature on the back. He was a child prodigy in both music and sculpture. He ended up as the sculptural director for the Cowan Pottery in Cleveland, Ohio, and then went on to do major important sculptures for the New York 1939 World's Fair. After the fair, he began getting commissions from Saks and Tiffany's to make these sorts of wares, so they've always been considered high-end. I always like abstraction in anything that looks like a skyline, and this is Paul Mann. I always think it looks like the reflection if you take the horizon. So this is tollware, probably from Pennsylvania or possibly here in Kentucky. They did that sort of thing too. You see it's on some sort of a sheet metal. It has a chinoiserie style with the pagoda and the Ming tree. It's had a lot of wear, but it's only priced at $350, and it does have its original lion feet and the handles and the poles. And that is why it's really a pretty good price again. I mean, I've got to say their stuff is not inexpensive, but it's sure a fun place to see really beautiful things. And, you know, if I was just buying for me, I could definitely do that. That's not a bad price either. 45. The purple glass seems like the best deal here. They've had a lot of nice screens. This one in the back with the children wrestling with the goat. These two seem to be strangling each other, trying to get a crown. Oh, these are bringing in the sheaths. The Florentine lamp is very pretty. I've had smaller versions of these before, but this large one priced at four fifty is rather large and elegant. For Saks Fifth Avenue, let's see what the mark on the back is. Yeah, Italian. I'm sure if we took a moment, we could identify and figure out who the designer was. But at that price, it's probably priced about right. Well, I like these Blanco tumblers with the rondelles on them. You don't see those too often. And yeah, there are some wind-up toys here. Her hat spins around while she dances. She's made out of celluloid. That's another Royal Bay Ruth whimsy piece from the early 1900s. A little picture there, dressed as a clown. Okay, I have to admit I like the flower power shade. This is some sort of a hallmark thing, I think, or no, it says R M R Marshall, made in Japan. Yeah, that's pretty fun. I wonder how much it is. Okay, the Elf is not old, but refreshing lemonade back there for 135 is actually a pretty good deal on that cooler, to tell you the truth. This room of all of them so far has had the things that I'm the closest to wanting to pull the trigger on relative to price. I really do like that lampshade. Zeno is going to tell us what these are. Sphygmonometer. Sig Sphygmonometer. Okay. It says so right on there. Sphygmonometer. Very good. I think. Everyone say that ten times fast. It doesn't say that on there. It's a vintage pressure cuff in any event. <laughs> yes, there's a book room, a whole bunch of Sylvester glasses, the short Pepsi glasses. You don't actually see those that often. And then, Perfect Pantry Company, St. Louis, the Chuck Wagon Pantry. So this has the clock in it, and this would have been something you could have taken it to a camp. It was all portable. It's not very heavy. It's stamped in. It's been redone 
you can tell it's been resurfaced or recoded in some way because it's completely free of rust even though it has some dents but the fact that this is even around at all is pretty amazing most of these would have been scrapped during the war drives in the second world war and so you don't see these a lot this place really is kind of incredible there are so many beautiful true antiques in here it's just a real feast for the eyes and it's a great place to have a fun learning experience and to see a lot of beautiful things a few of them could go in my house don't have room for much of this but somebody who has a wonderful mansion or is building one could incorporate a lot of this into their plan and that is where a lot of the customer base for this sort of a store is this, this place, place has true antiques there's several, several pieces, pieces of staffordshire, staffordshire match, match dogs, dogs. They, they were not all spaniels, spaniels as you can see here and there were other animals and birds and i still think it's a very interesting area to collect it's just you don't see a lot of collections like this to tell you that in one place anymore because most of this is already in collections this is interesting because the match set has stayed together somehow. These little secretary desks or cabinets on desks or however you want to view this piece of furniture. It obviously has a couple of different uses. The proportions are Adam style, but these date to about the 1850s and they're English. You can see a little bit of rippling in the windows if you catch them from the right angle. We'll see if you can tell that over here because these are the original glass panes. So these have obviously been kept very well their entire life and probably in one mansion for most of it because otherwise you would expect that one of them would have gone one way and one would have gone with another heir at some point or that the glass would be broken and redone. So that's a pretty remarkable thing to find those together. It's got the old handshake foil label but the jars don't sell all that well. They were done in the mid 70s and they're useful and they're cool. I mean, if you really love Blanco, they're colorful and great to have in the kitchen, but they're, they're not what a lot of the collectors are looking for. This section is available by appointment only. It looks to me like they have Sevres porcelain, large Satsuma vases, a whole lot of French mirrors and French painted furniture. I'm not even sure I have any clothes that would be appropriate for me to come into a parlor like this, but it is quite beautiful. Quite a handsome copper pitcher here with a very, very wide bottom to avoid spillage. More of the Louisville stoneware bachelor button pattern. Frame Victorian fans, lovely chandeliers, four poster beds, this really pretty French landscape screen here. Opulence is not something that is out of reach. There are wonderful, beautiful Victorian antiques still. Oh, look at the Venetian vitrine with the hand painting all the way through from the early 1900s. We just had the Kentucky Derby and yes, mint julep cups in sterling do sell for somewhere in the $225 each range. These ones are all initialed A. That's my middle initial, but I don't think I can pull that off. Paper mache was pretty easy to paint, and so it was used extensively around the 1860s. Yeah, there's a bunch of this. It's Ephraim pottery. It appears to be newer, but it is to definitely capture 19 teens, 20s, and 30s pottery, arts and crafts era, and early molded work. I think it's actually very good. And then this is A.R. Cole. A.R. Cole was a North Carolina potter who worked until his death in 1974. His early pieces are often mistaken for Francoma, but his later pieces are clearly marked and distinctive. Wow, this place is so extensive. Look at all the bronzes. A lot of these seem to be newer, but there's also some really beautiful ones. Rough and Rowdy by Burl Jones. And the Spear Thrower. Burl Jones started out as a dentist in West Virginia, but in 1992 he left that to become a sculptor. Here's a little book with some information about him. He is still producing, although in very limited numbers and only in certain seasons, because he is semi-retired now. The book describes how he uses the lost wax method to create these pieces. It's a complicated process, but in essence what it is is that you make the original sculpture, make a wax mold of it, then surround that by ceramics, and when you burn off the wax, then you have the ceramic shell and you can recast these. He does additions of 500 or fewer of each of these sculptures. 
<laughs> the women who work here are wonderful and they have now drafted Zeno to go help them so I can shop all by myself. Although I have to say he's been finding really good things for me on this trip, so it's been fun. Case glass basket, the bride's basket. I mean, look how cheap these are even here now. $42 on the Blanco bed base. They have a lot of really nice pieces here. It just goes on and on. Oh, another one. Look there, just when I said they used to fill them with marbles in the 80s, there's another one. With blown chips. Ooh, I don't want anybody's blown chips. That's an interesting Blanco piece here, this big undulating tray, and then this one with the little attachments, the applied leaf. I like this piece too. This one's only 65 and it's a pretty color. It looks like something from the early 60s with the pinches, but it is on the small side. Look at the signature very closely. This is Lee Reynolds. Lee Reynolds is factory painted. It is not a real artist. It is a company that in the 1970s would paint very large scale screen prints and do enough hand embellishing to make them look painted and put the Lee Reynolds name on it. So perfectly fun. They did some really fun and cool graphics that people are liking that are very of the era, but just don't think that it's a real painting and a real artist. Well, these are Haywood Wakefield, so they're 485 for the pair. Caronan, Old Colony, wherever Old Colony was. The Old Colony shop must have been the place that had that made for them. Alpen Pantry, Lickety Split, Taylor Travel, and George's Men's Shop. And these were done in the early 70s because the penny would always be a new penny when they stuck it on top. I like that. How do you know it's been here a long time? The writing is completely Ah, sometimes that's where you get a deal is you take that up. It's very elfin. I mean, it's, again, it's a shame there's not a man, but at least it's the woman. It is really cool. The Chinese red. Yeah, you see that in this part of the country a lot. I like that color a lot. Late 30s. And they want 95 and 55. The sundial casserole is the most desirable, the one on the left. Now, we just saw in the highway sale yesterday the one on the left, but with the cherry bake light handles. This is Blanco, too. I have not seen the miniature before. That's funny. That somehow this escaped me. I think these were done about 20 years ago. About half of the regular size. <laughs> Unless you think, how can they sell these things? Well, you know, there has to be retail for there to be wholesale and pickers and people selling at all levels of the market. They are selling things. This pair has sold. Theodore Alexander, they're mirrored back. They are well made. It was a good name when it was new. It's a good name now. These are probably, oh, maybe 40, 50 years old. This is Zeno in his natural environment. Maybe with the return of brass, we'll see interest in white brass like this on this Korean chest. It's actually a chest on chest and it's priced at $26.50. You can see the break here between the two pieces of furniture. That way you have a nice chest of drawers and a cabinet and you can move it easily. Another piece sold, I have to say, it's been pretty busy and they've been doing a lot of rearranging. So they definitely have a customer here. We get to see what people were willing to pay for some things. Ah, okay. So Zeno did a little recon here and they go to the decorator showcase in Atlanta and then around the Atlanta area. And they in turn sell to people farther north. A big pickup truck full is going out to Louisville. It's very smart. They're dealing in vintage, so they're not buying at the Decorator Showcase, but they are seeing what is popular there so that they can get an idea of what will be popular with posh interior decorators shortly down the line. Well, this place is definitely quite showy, quite fancy, and really amazing, and you could spend hours and hours in here and learn a lot and maybe take home one or two really favorite things for yourself. Again, I don't think I'm going to find anything here as a reseller, although there have been one or two things that were close, but look at this amazing lamp in here. These were popular in the 1960s. If you like brass and the comeback of brass, well, here it is. Yeah, these were made in Morocco, I believe, at the time. 
and some of these were very good quality. It's beaded. You look at it, you think early as 20th century, but then look at the fixtures. Those are definitely 1950s or 60s era. They're really well done, though. Well, the youngin Eden Collins horse purse is 125. These fox hunting napkin holders are an interesting set. And then here's some earlier Kentucky Derby glasses. The 1940s in the background there, 50s in the front, and early 60s. These are the ones that can be worth $50 to $100 and more. I wonder how much. It is a Pilgrim Masterwork. That's the Europa line. They made those in like six inches up to this giant size. Yeah, just wait till people catch on to those and they start getting expensive, like huge swung vases. And then this is Higgins. This is a cute little plate here. I believe there's some continuing production from family. Sometimes they're marked Higgins. I don't think this one is. There's different periods where they're marked in different ways. Now that's Dansk. And yeah, the eyeball tray is a uh, Jens Quiskard piece. And 335 really is actually not a bad price for that. That actually might be something I could buy for resale, believe it or not, because they're wild for that stuff in Portland. Another Wayland Gregory piece. This one's a little more 50s kitchen whimsy looking. But again, he was making these for high-end department stores because he had such a background and fame as a sculptor. He even studied at the Cranbrook Design School in Michigan, which is a big feather in his cap. Now, we like to think that everything made in the Victorian era was of wonderful, great quality, but they actually used all sorts of materials, and one of them was paper mache with lacquer on it. This would be sometime around 1860 with the hand painting of the floral spray and the inlays, and you can see the back of it here. This one's in really good condition. You obviously would not have wanted to get something like this wet or leave alcohol on it for long periods of time. So there's not many of these in good shape. This is a loo table or a tilt top table. It was fun to be able to use these as fireplace screens for Victorian women as well as using them as little tables. And this one's priced at $9.50. This is a very pretty arts and crafts era lamp too with the slag glass here in the jeweling and this one they're calling it merry-go-round it does look a little bit like that it has a mark on the vase i'm not going to lift it up to find out but they are asking over 1300 for it and in this market that's pretty much full value i have always been a fan of this english missionaris furniture it mixes a little bit of art nouveau like this appears to be a stylized thistle on this cabinet, along with the linearity and structure of American arts and crafts. And so it's a fun combination to me. I wish I was finding more information about prices for you, but not a lot is posted. Wow, just one opulent room after another. Well, I have to say this was not what I was expecting to find during the highway sale today, but it is pretty impressive. If you were sending up a nice house, and a lot of people are. There's a ton of people moving to the Nashville area, for example, who I imagine come here and shop. Eight fifty for the Kent Coffee Mirror. That's Italian. That's a good name. This piece, it has a top that you would think might be French, but the shape to me seems more Dutch. I like the porcelain insets a lot of flowers, a marble top, the way it bows and the proportions. I can't get behind it to confirm my hunch, but that is what I think this is. Thomas Earl was an English artist. I've actually had him in an appraisal before. These two are priced at just under 6000 for the pair of terriers. He was painting in the early to mid 19th century primarily. You can see the detail in the faces. I think that's what makes him particularly interesting to collectors now. That's one of the more interesting things Burley Ware made. I think it's supposed to be uh, the Pied Piper leading everybody away. Priced at 195 There's the rats. Yeah, yum, rats on your table. It's probably why they don't sell as fast as they should. I have to admit I'm getting a little turned around in here, though. These are beautiful items. It's definitely a place for collectors. It's definitely a place for decorators. The Louisville stoneware ashtray with the ship's wheel for $23.50 is not bad. Over in the corner, 
we have this Mason's Imari platter and it has the wells for the juice when you serve a big piece of meat on there. Oh yes, Cosmos, a whole bunch of it, the painted as opposed to the color. Interesting, yeah, they've got the syrup. That's a nice piece. That's why people like to collect this back when I started in the business, but then it all went away in collections and you can't find it usually. Yeah, I like the oil lamp. It's an oil lamp. Yeah, it's a miniature, like a kerosene lamp or, yeah, consolidated glass. This is before they did the Art Deco stuff. Oh, yeah, it would work. And they've got a dresser jar, the butter dish. They've got tumblers, syrup container, cream and sugar, and the condiment set. Yeah. Now, I'll bet they're using this as a utility cart because this used to be a school. I bet it was left here, but I like these utility carts. I would certainly buy that if it was for sale and I have the room to take it with me. They make great bar carts too. These are Royal Worcester. This one was done as an advertisement for Mack Truck. Royal Worcester was known for being pretty realistic about its depictions of animals. They gave people a lot of time to study them and make sure everything was done exactly like a real animal would look. I like the op artifact on this coverlet, even though it's from the 1800s. It's got a very 1960s feel. 195. It says it's as is, though. They have Spode China in here. Billingsley Rose, I believe that is. This is cute with the old log cabin. This is something that looks like it was made in the 80s or 90s, but it's still kind of fun. The Mary Hadley and Louisville stoneware pieces look right at home with this Japanese sake or water or beverage jug. Yes, those lamps are quite ostentatious. I don't think I'd have them in my house. I like the fireplace screen with the swans on it. A nice, again, another walnut. This is an American walnut bedroom set here. 1880s. Some East Lake details. Nice, pretty fiesta and a bunch of Yadro. And show the moose. Oh, yes. Must show the moose. This is very cute. This is from New England and it's a spoon holder. This is going to be from sometime around 1800 and that's why it's priced as high as it is. Yeah, yes, yeah. there's also a little bit of modernism in here. Those are definitely Murano birds and very pretty and I'd like to know how much. They have a green set below. Even the bathroom is nice. I never thought I'd film inside a bathroom before. These are really good. These are Dome France. They did cameo glass, but they also did this that looks a lot like Peking glass coming from China about the same time. But they've got the horse and crystal. These are all carved. And look at the detail on the frog. Those typically are well over four figures. But the piece I really like is this one because it's loads. And this is an early form of Bohemian modernist glass when they're starting to use the iridescent colors. This one's priced at $17.50 with the big threading because it's a rather large piece. Here's a very pretty a pair in a dome. This is opalescent glass with the jack-in-the-pulpit shapes. A much more steady jack-in-the-pulpit than we see from a lot of companies. And I can't see the price. I think it's somewhere in the high hundreds, which would be appropriate. Well, this place is very complete and we are heading past some Venetian glass mirrors and a very cool glass table down to the restaurant level. I think they are just cleaning up after lunch, but this is a very glitzy space called Glitz. And look what they've done to the basement of this place. This reminds me a lot of a place that I went to in Poland and it was quite beautiful. And similarly done in a basement like this, lunch at the Glitz. They even have a recipe book. That's very impressive. I'm sorry that we missed out on lunch. Quite lovely. This is a very impressive outfit. Well, thank you. That's yeah. so kind. And wow, look and how so you had a, that so this is. was a riding camp, or you were no, part of it? We, saw... we started uh, in our other location. We had a riding camp. Okay. So first the mom sold antiques at the writing camp, then the dad bought and renovated this school, and the daughters are carrying on the tradition they've been in the business 50 years. Well, perhaps someday this will be the antique dealer that I will become. It's so impressive. It's such a beautiful place. I'm so glad that we ended up coming here 
And we've had a whole lot of fun on this journey so far. Stick with us. We'll have more video from it. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.